Kyogre got a Sanquee solo run at the end of 2022, not that long ago, and a lot has really changed since then, since we are doing much more tailored custom ROMs these days, and we've already seen both Groudon and Rayquaza, I think it's time to see how the C Basin Pokemon will stack up against its other Gen 3 box art counterparts. And real quick, if you like solo runs and you have just a spare, just a single spare second, I'm exploring the algorithm. I think that watch time and likes are really what help a video out long term. I don't really care much about the watch time I'm not gonna preach to you about that but if you do have a second I would like it if you hit that like button I would like to hit 400 of those bad boys see if you can help me out and I'm also interested to see how you guys think that this one will go stay tuned at the end for an updated look at the tier list for cross-gen runs but for a preview we've done seven custom cross-gen runs and Groudon sits at number one and at a mere minute and 20 seconds behind it is Rayquaza so going into today's video Kyogre has some pretty big shoes to fill but that's enough talk Talk. Let's sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's write the final chapter of this trilogy. Now before we dive into the new moves and the stats, let's change up the pacing this week. Let's go over the rival battle. The biggest difference in Kyogre this time is the starting learn set. In the original, you only have a 60 base power water pulse until level 15, but here we get a full complement of moves, including pivotal coverage with body slam right at the start. And here it's a two shot. We don't really have to go into it too much. And now let's talk about Kyogre with a little bit more depth into it. As expected, today's stats, they're monstrous. Everything is gonna be above average average to great, and the star of the whole bunch here is going to be that 150 base special. Now, it's worth noting, it's still not as good as Mewtwo, but there's not really much that can say it is. Today, we'll be using the Gen 9 learn set like we did for the other two Gen 3 legendaries, and I took out some moves here and there like Aqua Ring, Sheer Cold, Muddy Water, Scary Face, and I also substituted Water Pulse for Bubble Beam, mainly just because they're so similar. The new moves for the run we'll be using today are as follows. We got Origin Pulse, which is just like Precipice Blades we see in the ground video. It's essentially kind of like a side grade to Hydro Pump. It does hit like a truck, but it's slightly weaker than Gen 1 Hydro Pump, and it has a little bit higher accuracy. The second move we'll see at level 9 is Aqua Tail. It's like a worse version of Surf. It does have 5 less base power and a rather annoying 90% accuracy, and I'm just going to say right here up front that it's definitely not as reliable as something like Earth Power was for Groudon. Ancient Power also makes a return today. It does have that 10% Omni boost chance, but spoiler alert, it's not going to have any use in today's run, but I'm just so proud that I got the Omni boost to actually work in Gen 1, so I kind of just threw it in. As for the early game, I go as fast as humanly possible. It's worth noting that Origin Pulse is the only way to reliably one-shot this Weedle here, and there's going to be a few spots in the early game that's like this. And if you remember in the Groudon run, there's a lot of time saves in the Optimize run that came down to me not using these lower accuracy moves, but what it comes down to today is that Bubble beam just doesn't cut it a lot in the early game and we have to take some risk but that's enough talk i think we can just take a look at brock And we don't have to spend too much time here today. The double weakness to water makes this one go exactly how you think it's gonna go. There's no need for origin pulse. Just go bubble beam, two shots, it's down. Now we can look ahead. Going towards Mount Moon, it is worth mentioning that on this first Caterpie, the only way to guarantee a one shot is to once again use origin pulse. And then after that, we do hit level nine, we get Aqua Tail. And I'm gonna go on a little bit of a tangent before we just continue in the video. On paper, 90% accuracy, it doesn't seem that bad. Theoretically hitting something 9 out of 10 times is consistent enough, but in practice, it rarely plays out that way. Now, I'm not going to call out every single time I miss Aqua Tail in this video, but between several Kyogre runs, it definitely added up. And if you kind of have a run of bad luck over the course of a run, it can add minutes to your final time. It's a little infuriating to me because every ROM that I make with Ancient Power, I've made three so far, I always thoroughly test it just to make sure it's still working. And sometimes, unless I change the proc rate, 
rate, I can use it 20 plus times before I see that 10% proc rate. But with Aquatel, it seems like I get the 10% mischance so often. There was a practice run I was doing that looked pretty smooth, but I missed Aquatel back to back in a single battle. And just throughout the course of the entire run, I missed many, many more times overall. And I guess what I'm trying to say here and what I want you guys to take away from this little mini rant here is that accuracy and consistency is so huge for these runs, especially when you consider that I only have time to do about three of these runs total to optimize. So Kyogre starting off with an 85% accurate move that's needed for some one shots. And then when it hits level nine, it learns a 90% accurate move. And the fact that Bubble Beam just can't quite make a lot of one shot ranges, it was the big challenge of this run. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about some optimization. Now, originally I wanted to stay on the bare minimum track. And then I wanted to do Misty first, but it turned out that that was really slow. To remedy this, I pay a visit to our old pal Super Nerd, and I also make really quick work of the hiker. Now this, along with a single wild Geodude encounter along the way, it ensures that we hit level 15 when we finish up the final fight in Mount Moon. I've said this before, but it bears repeating that when you are a legendary that has crazy base stats, each and every level that you get gives you so many stats. The power shift from being something like level 13 going to level 15 is massive and while you might think that this would cost you time or slow down the final time overall it's important to note that level 15 gives you that sweet damage rounding threshold and it's going to put so many of these trainers coming up into one shot ranges and that alone will regain us that lost time now remember i said i was going to go straight to misty at level 13 and i guess the quick rundown of why that just wasn't good was that when you're level 13 going against level 20 something pokemon it's just really slow you might as well do two quick extra battles, come back to it later, make it quick. As for rival number two, Origin Pulse is a one shot at level 15 on the Pidgeotto and we outspeed. With Kyogre's attack stat, Ancient Power just won't get the job done here. That's why we replaced it. Once it falls, the threat of this battle goes significantly down. We all know that. And with Body Slam, I do have that heavy neutral damage. And overall, this is much quicker than trying to do Misty. And I'm gonna stop talking about that, I promise. As for Nugget Bridge, the beautiful thing here is now that Bubble Beam and its nice 100% accuracy can one-shot most of these Pokemon. I've said it like a million times that this part of the game, Nugget Bridge leading up to Bill's house, this contains the single biggest clump of mandatory battles in the entire game. And if you can make this quicker, your runs will be a lot better. So it was very important to hit level 15 and make Bubble Beam be able to put in work. Now there's still like three spots where Aquatel is needed, but just overall putting the flow of the game into the much more consistent hands of Bubble Beam is really what kind of trimmed this run down compared to some of my earlier tests. After that, we can take on Misty. Now, she was doable at level 13. Remember that. It was a little bit slow, but with all these extra levels, Body Slam just melts through her. This one's over quick. There's not much to talk about here. Now, we can skip it all the way down to the SSN. We already know Body Slam, so we can skip it. I do pick up the Rare Candy here. We'll talk about this more in just a second, but I was skipping this in every practice battle just because Kyogre's so powerful, and I really, just like with Ray Quaza, I wanted to trim off as much as possible, but I do grab it. We'll come back to that in a second. As for rival number three, we're a lot more powerful than we were for rival number two. Now I don't even need Origin Pulse, not even Aqua Tail. Bubble Beam can just take care of the Pidgeotto, and with Body Slam for the Kadabra and the Ivysaur, there's not much to talk about with this one. But now let's talk about something else real quick. A lot of people trash on Lieutenant Surge. They say he's the absolute worst. J Rose has a running gag with it. I'm not throwing any shade on J Rose, so please don't comment that. I get like one comment a week about that. Anyway, Lieutenant Surge, if you're weak to him in red and blue, he does have good AI. So if you're weak to electric like Kyogre is, there can be some problems. But let's just take a look at it real quick. As for the first two Pokemon, there's not much to say. They are within range of a Bubble Beam. It can just one-shot them. We can move on to the Raichu. Now, let me just say here, there is a lose condition. If you get Thunderbolted twice and you miss one of your subpart accuracy moves like an Aqua Tail, you can lose this one. You likely will lose this one. But here, we kind of, I just hopped Lieutenant Surge up, but at the end of the day, the X speed does him in. It's just like a guard spec from Silphco. He wastes his turn, and I'm able to take it out without missing. But I really want to highlight that I did lose this battle in some 
practice runs just because you miss an aqua tail or something like that. Or it has high crit rate, maybe it crits with a thunderbolt. But it's not the easiest fight, but we do get by with no resets, everything's looking pretty good. After the battle, and I talked about this in the original Kyogre run, is that this is what sets this water type apart from normal water types. Most of them have the same standard move sets. You get a stab surf, you can learn that, then you maybe get a good physical move like body slam, and then you get the standard ice moves, ice beam, blizzard, and that's pretty much it for the vast majority of water types. But the fact that Kyogre can learn Thunderbolt is a game changer. And since we have the special to make full use of it, it's gonna help a lot in this run. Also, if you noticed real quick in the footage, I did use a rare candy here to hit level 25. That was very important for the consistency of the run. When I talked about earlier how I was skipping the gentleman candy, I figured I would go ahead and pick it up and just use it right after surge. And hitting level 25 here, it only, it does a few things here for some ranges coming up. But the main thing is that the wrapping junior trainer here that wants to put a status condition on you and wrap, it can be quite the hassle if you can't one shot all the Pokemon. And just for consistency's sake, I hit level 25 for that damage rounding threshold, and that means this battle's much more consistent. And this battle, it, it's quite the hassle for a lot of water types, but thankfully we have body slam, we have decent stats, so it's really not too bad today. But you gotta trust me when I say when I was doing this earlier, it just wasn't that great, so this, this felt a lot better. Next up, we can take it all the way down to Celadon. We don't need to look at Rock Tunnel, and we're gonna take on the Rocket Hideout. And I wanna mention something real quick, not really a tangent, but this is more directly Kyogre related. Related. At level 18, and I kind of skimmed over this, I didn't put it in for the Nugget Bridge section, but at level 18 we learned Growth. I believe the original learn set was Calm Mind, which is essentially the same thing. Stat boosting moves are really incredible in Generation 1 because of the badge boost glitch. I think most of us do know that. But what it came down to for me was that Kyogre just has the base stats to not really need it. I do think it would probably be worth to test out a little more. Maybe it can make the end game a little bit quicker, but I just felt throughout my few runs of doing this that it wasn't needed with the 150 base special along with its pretty high speed. It just didn't do much for you and the moose set is a little bit tight as it is so I just didn't see the use of it if you're wondering about that. I felt like it was worth mentioning because I did kind of wrestle in my brain a little bit about should I use growth, should I not use growth so I wanted to at least bring it up and I figured this was a good time to do it. When that's wrapped up we can go ahead and do our one Celadon buy of the run and we keep it pretty simple here. Let's talk about the vitamins first. You can afford five of them with all the routing that we did the rocket hideout first. Uh, three calciums, just because you want to make your strongest stuff even better. And since you have pretty good speed, you only need two carbos just to ensure you outspeed everything in the entire game. And it is worth noting that I did not pick up anything on the top floor. Kyogre can learn rock slide, but your attack isn't great. Ice beam, really good coverage, but the way I routed it, I'm just going to use blizzard later. And I figured I could save a few seconds by not picking up ice beam. I don't even learn it at level 36 when we were supposed to learn it, but just stay tuned. You'll see how I work with it. I just thought, I needed to mention that as well. As for Pokemon Tower and Rival Number 4, there's not much to say, but I would like to praise Thunderbolt just a little bit. I always talk about how I think it's the best coverage move, and when you go against like another team like the, the Fire Starter or the Grass Starter, he's going to lead with a Pidgeotto or a Pidgeot in various points of the game, and he has a Gyarados. Here the Gyarados is back to back. Thunderbolt just makes those things trivial, and we've already mentioned this, kind of ad nauseum with the other fights that Body Slam gives you coverage for the Kadabra, for the Ivysaur, and you just don't really need Ice Beam at this point, and we can skip over the rest of the tower as well. It's pretty trivial. Bubble Beams can one-shot the Gastlys. After that, I go down to the Safari Zone. I pick up the final HMs of the run, a couple of extra vitamins, and the real thing here is access to Surf. Very consistent, very reliable, 95 base power move, 142 effective power with Stab. It's really strong. It's very nice to get right now. And now let's talk about our routing a little bit and kind of how it differs from some of these other cross-gen runs. First off, we're going to head down to Fuchsia, and we're going to take on Koga. Now I'm showing this juggler here. The only important thing is that we hit level 33 exactly at the end of the fight and right now I'm going to use three early rare candies. Notice we don't learn Ice Beam. I've already talked about that but the three early rare candies here really help out in the long run and now we can just take a look at Koga real quick. This 
one overall is pretty standard. We have really good stats. We just boosted our level just a little bit. At level 35, you can start to one-shot the coughing, so it's no issue. We get to the Muck. It's a two-shot range, but he uses Disable on Surf, and that's slightly annoying because now we have to start going for Aqua Tails. And I've already talked about that 90% accuracy enough. But that still isn't the issue. I don't miss any Aqua Tails, and it's really not that much weaker than Surf, so we can kind of live with that. But what ends up happening here at the end of the fight, and there's really, honestly, there's nothing you can do about this. I hit Aqua Tail. It looks like it's a very comfortable two-shot range on the Weezing. Then it uses Self-Destruct, and it crits. And my friends, we have our first reset. This is only, I think out of all the cross-gen runs, I think this is only like the second reset total between all seven or eight of them. But like I said, there's nothing you can do about this. If you get crit on a Self-Destruct, I mean, just good luck. You know, what are you going to really do about it? On the next attempt, we don't have to cover the whole fight. Uh, Surf doesn't get disabled this time, so we can just go back to back. It doesn't use Self-Destruct. Even if it did, we would survive anything outside of a crit, but it just uses an X attack. We take it out, and it's unfortunate we had a reset here, but it is what it is. There is always a factor of luck in these runs. One reset, maybe even two resets. I don't really count it too much against the Pokemon, but it is what it is. Let's keep moving on. Beating Koga does give us access to use Surf outside of battle. That means we can take a pretty early Swift Swim this week, and there are a couple of really good things to get in the Pokemon Mansion. Outside of the very helpful Carbos, Blizzard is the real prize here. This puts our current moveset, it's looking really strong. When you have a stabbed surf, along with very, very pivotal coverage moves like Thunderbolt and Blizzard, along with that 150 base special, you have a very formidable learn set, and it's looking really good right now, but we don't have to do anything extra outside of that, and I think we can just take a look at Blaine. Hey, you guys thought I was going to forget. Tombstoner, brother! Didn't you? I never forget. TM28, it lives in my head rent-free every single day. And I'm not going to waste your time on Blaine. We're a water type. We're not just a water type. We're kind of like the water type. We have a very strong serve with super effective and stab. It's at 285 effective power. You can see that on the overlay. It makes short work of his team, even though we're under leveled. There's a reason why we came here, so we can just move on. But getting that special badge boost, always helpful, always good. And now we're going to backtrack a little bit for Erica, just because I saved a little time by not picking up the Ice Beam TM or learning it via level up, waiting for Blizzard. Now I take her on. It's not necessarily because she posed a huge threat or anything. I could survive probably multiple Razor Leaves even at earlier levels. But I just want to point out that at this level, a Surf can one-shot, a Resisted Surf, mind you, can one-shot this Execute, and I'm very happy about it. And I don't even save walking up to Erica. That's really all you need to know about the fight. Now, I mentioned uh, I didn't have to hold off on Erica, but I just think saving the time of learning Ice Beam, well, I've already talked about it. All you need to know about this fight is three Blizzards up, three Blizzards down. It's it's over with. It's real quick. And fighting her earlier, maybe learning Ice Beam or something like that, all it would do is just make your run slower. And I really want the runs to be as fast as possible. That's the title of the video. Well, technically not the title of these videos, but all my other ones are how fast. You, you get it. Now that we have six badges down, all we can do is go to Silphco. And we do head up to the 10th floor. The 10th floor is usually lucrative for all runs. It's got the Carbos. It's got a rare candy. But for today, to cap off this amazing learn set is Earthquake. It's going to give you very valuable coverage against things like Agatha and just to boot it's a 100 base power move so it hits really hard on things that are resistant to special attacks kind of like the Alakazams and stuff we'll see coming up. And I'm showing this fight right here in detail just because I want you guys to see Kyogre at full potential peak power. Its learn set is pretty much filled out all the way, and there's really not much the game could throw at us that would throw a wrench in our plans. We have coverage, we have damage for pretty much anything, and we're just kind of putting on a clinic today. It is worth noting that Blizzard, maybe not just yet for the Venusaur, but Blizzard will be needed to hit one-shot ranges on it later in the game, so that's why I didn't want to bother with Ice Beam early because I'm always looking ahead at the final time how things are going to work out so this one's pretty good it always bodes well and feels really good when a Pokemon can make such short work of rival number five now all that's left to do is some final cleanup before we get to the final battles of the game and Sabrina is in our way earthquake does just fine I will say I made one tiny little baby mistake here I should have used like a serve on the Mr. Mime because it survives Alakazam at the end can survive an earthquake as well but all it does on its turn is set up reflect even if it used its most powerful move and crit, we would still survive anyway. 
anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's go take a look at the final gym. And ladies and gentlemen, I can sum up this entire battle in one single word, and that's surf. All I you do is use surf, and it's good enough. It one-shots everything, and just like that, we have all eight badges. Now we can start to look ahead at the challenging parts of the run. And before we get there, after the battle, I do use all of the rest of my rare candies. I have six left. I get all the way up to level 50, and for me, this felt the most consistent, but I'll be the first to admit that I do kind of doubt myself sometimes. I look at my routing, I look at the software, the damage ranges, and all that kind of stuff, and I'm not perfect. Sometimes I second guess my decisions, but we'll see how this one goes. And in the short term at least, it pays off because it makes the rival number six fight incredibly easy. We just really quickly skimmed over the rival number five fight and the same thing applies here. We just have such a wide array of moves that can cover any kind of threat and we make short work of it. it this fight is significantly harder if you don't use rare candies, but it is possible. But I just didn't want to take the risk. I wanted things to be as consistent as they possibly could be. So that's why you're seeing all those rare candies here. And now let's kind of look ahead. Not quite at the Elite Four just yet. I got one more thing I want to talk about. Inside of Victory Road, I make one final decision, and that's the fact that I'm not going to be picking up the rare candy today. Looking over the numbers, it didn't seem to help that much. And you can save like 20 seconds if you don't pick it up. Even more in-game time. Probably 20 seconds of real life time. Even more in, since I'm playing on times 3 speed, even more. And I figured that this decision would let me get as close to Groudon as possible, but this is where I really second guess myself because there's going to be, we're going to see in the Elite Four, there's going to be times where I'm going to be thinking, would an extra level have sped this up? But that's kind of just conjecture and me just kind of talking off the top of my head here. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I do think it's time we finally take a look at the Elite Four. Lorelai's first, and we're gonna see what we're talking about here. Dugong is a really bulky Pokemon, so it's not surprising that a Thunderbolt can't one-shot it, but let's say maybe really early in the game I was to save that rare candy I used after Surge, and I would have picked up the uh, Victory Road rare candy, I'd be at level 53, and I can't help but wonder if that level 53 threshold would have made this fight a little faster. Now, overall, this is a pretty easy fight, but there's just a few turns that just kind of lag on a little bit, and I do think this could have been a little bit faster. I'm not sure if it would have made a difference but you guys know I have to analyze it and I have to talk about it at some point but with Thunderbolt and the water top resisting most of their moves this one's not too bad next up is Bruno or should I say Hiker Anthony you guys know what we've been doing on the channel and this one's just like Giovanni all I gotta say is surf I go straight surf and what's kind of impressive about this one even though it does take a crit I do actually one shot the Machamp and you just don't see the Machamp get one shot very often that's about the only thing I can say about this fight this week we can move on next up is Agatha we don't need to take too much time on this this is specifically what earthquake is for we could do all right probably even with just the special moves here probably just going straight surf or something like that but we don't have to we got earthquake it does very well in this fight her pokemon are defensively kind of frail earthquake hits really hard and it's over really quick uh probably quicker than bruno honestly now we got lance up next and i think looking at the learn set you kind of know that this one's going to be easy and after kind of showing some skepticism on lorelei you can see that the next few fights have been really trivial not just trivial just a series of one shots now since we got thunderbolt for the gyarados blizzard for the dragons you know that's what's going to happen here i do make a slightly riskier play here and that's by going straight blizzard throughout the rest of the fight now if i was to miss once or twice it could give me some issues but i knew in the long run it would save some time just a little tiny few seconds of time and i was looking at the the current in-game time at 208 and i was really kind of pushing to get the best time possible so i was kind of like reckless just pulling ahead right here but that's it for Lance there's only one more fight left Pidgeot is first. There's no playing around. Blizzard is not necessary. One Thunderbolt, we can clip this bird's wings and move on just like that. Then comes the Alakazam, and let me talk about a quick shortcoming of Kyogre real quick. Notice that I don't go for Earthquake. It's because Earthquake's a two-shot range pretty much no matter what, and so is Surf. So I just keep it on Surf here because I know I'm going to be using Surf on the next Pokemon anyway, so I can maybe save like a millisecond or two right there. But Kyogre's slightly weaker attack. It's kind of one of its shortcomings. But when that's over, we can kind of rapid fire 
dryer real quick. We have the double weak to water right on. It cannot take a surf to save its life. And then the Gyarados comes in. Same thing, double weak to Thunderbolt. We can take that out as well. And the same thing goes for Arcanine. It cannot tank our massive 285 effective power surf to the dome. It goes down and now we're staring straight down the barrel at the end of the fight. I outspeed, I let a blizzard rip, but it just doesn't quite one shot and the rival uses a full restore to go back and I have a second chance. This time we don't get unlucky, we hit our ranges, blizzard 100 to zeros the Venusaur and that's it. That's the battle and the run over with. And that's it, Kyogre has done it. With a final time of two hours, 11 minutes and 13 seconds, along with that one reset that I wouldn't look into much because it was a crit self-destruct, I don't really care much about it. But if Kyogre were to get its card, it would look something like this. Now, unfortunately, this is not the best cross-gen run we've ever done. There is one better, but what's if we look at this final tier list, we update this tier list and we bring it out here, you're gonna see that the top three runs are all from generation three. It's the Gen 3 box art legendaries, and I think that's pretty cool. When we look back at this run, we've talked about the problems it had. It was just a little bit off, and I think that's where you see that little tiny bit of discrepancy between this time and what a time like Groudon had. Groudon just had more consistent moves that it had access to earlier, and it just hit really hard. I think physical damage is really strong in Gen 1. Everybody always talks about special, but I think when you get a really good ground type Pokemon, it can really wreak havoc overall. This one's fun. I can't wait to jump in later to the Alolan summer runs. I, I got full plans to do nothing but Gen 7 runs for the whole summer. Hopefully that'll go well. Uh, let me know. We're going to have Alolan Raichu coming up next. And I don't want to babble on too long. I want to keep the videos concise and short. But with that said, special thanks to my channel members. I really do appreciate you guys. The support that you give me is amazing. And it really does help out a little bit. Just to know that there's some people out there that care. Hopefully this video went over pretty well. Like I said, I've said it a lot of times. I haven't been scripting my videos for a while so sometimes I get a little rambly sometimes I mess up a little bit but it is what it is and if you're still hearing my voice right now you're amazing I appreciate you you're a real one type that down in the comments type down real one in the comments just so I know you made it that far so I can appreciate you even more but that's about all I have for you guys and I guess I'll catch you on the next video bye